The other point I want to bring up uh, in the next column deals with, I mentioned cities have to be a place that we want to live. And indeed, quality of life is quite important. Urbanization has been shown to uh, increase, or rather, human development index has moved with, positively, urbanization. But our human development, which is an aggregate measure of um, per capita income, health, and education, also moves with the quality of our environment. And so the challenge is, how can we, while becoming more self-reliant as cities, how can we improve the natural environment within our administrative borders so that the citizens that live there can enjoy the quality of life increases that large-scale uh, urban green space can provide? I want to mention, I mentioned earlier about the storing water on site. When you join those all together into an urban wetland where you increase your biodiversity, you have sources of water, plants and animals as an oasis for them. The economic benefits there, thank you, the economic benefits there include uh, filtration of uh, air and water and noise reduction. And to give you an idea, in the middle 2000s, China was spending on the order of $6 billion to put a green wall around Beijing to filter and purify essentially the air that was otherwise made unpleasant on account of large-scale deforestation and large-scale automobile use. So in that respect, these, these aesthetic features are not valueless. They both have definite benefit to us as people who live in cities, as well as helping our cities become more resilient and more robust, and in a sense, more self-reliant. 